when I was a young person, weeding was a um, punishment. So I never kind of grew up with gardening as something I wanted to do. But after I saw permaculture and organic farming in practice, I couldn't really shake it after that. I thought maybe when I started I would do bouquets at the markets, but I've just ended up going in this totally different direction, which is growing for the sustainable-minded bread. I started at uni studying entertainment marketing. I was obsessed with music, completely obsessed. Slowly this kind of obsession with music kind of transitioned into me being a touring DJ, working more in the dance music scene. I was just completely obsessed, but there came a point where I was just burnt out. And when I got, was getting that burnout, that was kind of at the same time as farming came into my life. I felt that same passion when I started in farming that I did when I first started touring and finding bands and showing people, oh, listen to this. And now I have that with the flowers. I'm like, oh, this breed, you know, is what made this and these dahlias are related. And if you, it's like this web is just opened up, you just get so obsessed. I feel like I can only have one obsession at a time. And my obsession right now is farming. Tulsi is the plant that I use the most in the garden as a, basically to hold space. Like, I'm not sure how to say it, but I take cuttings all the time, constantly. Not only is that gonna create shade and suppress weeds, but it's also something that you can eat. It's something that the bees can eat and it hides the plants that get uh, a lot of insects on them from being able to be smelt because the Tulsi has such a strong smell. Well, I think it all starts with the soil health. And I find that if you can kind of listen to the plant and what it needs, you typically don't need to spray or you don't need to um, come in and interrupt what's going on. You know, the first thing you do when you get flowers is you smell them. And my flowers, you can do that. But when you take flowers that have been grown with chemicals and you smell them, you're just putting your face into a pile full of chemicals, it's just so counterintuitive. So it's nice to know that the product, the flowers that we have here are good for you and not bad for you, which you'd think would be all flowers, but it's not the truth. Hi, Muzzy. For me, this is the home of so many different insects and instead of spraying and creating less diversity, I think it's better to build to build more of a home up for more things so that it kind of manage itself. I feel like they get pretty big. We have the trellis here. I've been a florist for the last, <laughs> what, nine years now. Um, and I guess I just wanted to get on the other side of things and into flower farming. It's where like as a florist, we see them just, you know, fully blooming. So it's nice to see them at the like full stages of their lives convenience is what we look for so getting from bigger flower wholesalers and getting things imported is a big part of floristry which everyone I guess is trying to steer away from. There's three growers in the area um, that range from the Gold Coast hinterland towards Lismore. If we have an order from a florist and there's something we're short on and the other person has it we'll go and like swap buckets. So you've got an extra bunch of the long and an extra bunch of the short. Cool. So you can probably actually fit all that just into the one. Because yeah. I think the main problem that we have as small growers is that sometimes we don't actually have the amount of flowers that the, um, the florist needs. So if we can kind of band together and make sure that we make it easy for the florist, they'll keep ordering locally. Like a, a long stem. The environment Lewin's created here for people to come here and um, have no experience or a little bit of experience and come and ask those questions that kind of might feel hard to ask or silly to ask and to have someone like Lewin to actually have the time to answer them and be very willing to walk them through things and give them advice. Oh well they're just getting a product that hasn't been intervened with hasn't been flown around, hasn't had things added to it to keep it in some weird 
state that will last forever. Like it's a, it's a real thing, it's a real flower. Somebody grew it, somebody had their hands on that. Somebody watched that thing grow from seed. The flower has a story and you're kind of proud to give that to people and have them understand that what they've got is something that is unreal and they know that they've supported a local farmer. It just feels like it's the way it should be. Welcome to Lewin's Flowers. <laughs> <laughs>